प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोद कारी पल पन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरे कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओम माइटी आर बिलीविंग घनश्याम महाराज the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. As we continue on, today we're going to discourse and analyze U.S. about course 3, February 16, 2019, for the ages of 18 to 45. Puja Swami in our last last course uh, read uh, Gadara first chapter 28th Vachnamrut and it was regarding progressing and regressing in satsang. Swami covered the pro, uh, part of regressing in satsang but still the part about progressing in satsang remains. So that's what we're going to discuss today and further understand by the grace of Maharaj and Puja Guruji. I'm going to start from the middle of the Vachnamrut where uh, Swami left off regarding progressing in satsang. Swami Narayan Hare. This is Vachnamrut Gadra, first chapter 28. When a person is likely to progress in satsang, pure desires steadily flourish within him. Day by day, he sees only virtues in all of the satsangis. He views all devotees as superior to himself and considers himself to be insignificant. Moreover, he experiences the bliss of satsang in his heart 24 hours a day. Such characteristics indicate that pure desires have flourished. In fact, the more such a person practices satsang, the more he benefits and eventually he attains profound greatness. Having delivered this court discourses, Sri Jamaraj bid J. Sachidanan to all and return to his seat. Now, today we're going to discuss regarding the characteristics of those who progress in satsang day by day. As you'll be able to, uh, when you look at the PDF, the bold part of the PDF that has been uh, bolded in the second paragraph, that consists of what we're going to discuss today. First and foremost, uh, Swami started off by the first characteristic. It says, day by day, he sees only virtues in all of the satsangis. The main point is uh, in this very line, yes, we know that we have to take virtues, and we know that we have to take virtues in satsangis, Maharaj, Santo, Bhakto, it's all there. But here Bhagwan puts a, a very, very... Um, very very you can say minute factor which makes it even more uh, you can say important is that Bhagwan uses the the words in all of the satsangis doesn't mean that only those who have been in satsang for a certain amount of time for a certain amount of years or those who are maybe very new but in regards to all satsangis is each and every one May they be only in satsang for a couple of years or maybe even a couple of months or maybe they have been satsang for 30 years or maybe they are only at the age of maybe a child of six, seven years old. But to grasp their qualities, this is what the emphasis Swami takes us on. Everyone can see good qualities in Muktan and Swami Paravat Pai Dada Khachar. But to perceive good qualities even in the smallest of devotees, is the very reason to experience peace at heart. Now, those who have good qualities inside of them, those who are das na das, such examples Swami gave of Muktanan Swami Parvat and Dada Khachar, sure, it would be easy to take good qualities from them because upon reading 
their charitra upon witnessing how their relationship was with Sriji Maharaj. It, 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 you can definitely see that this was a great saint or this was a great Hari Bhagat. May it be a male or may it be a female. But on the regards to that, to perceive good qualities even in the smallest devotees. Now, this word is used, smallest devotees. But in satsang, it doesn't work like that. Satsang's meter regarding how great a devotee is, according to the Vachnamrut as well, is not regarding how many years you have surpassed or how old you are, but it's regarding the understanding you have for Maharaj, his Satpurush, and Satsang overall. So even if this word is used smallest of devotees, it's just to emphasize um, and try to try to. Um, give us a distance between you know we should not look at age or we should not look at any kind of uh, years and satsangs sort of past we should only look at their good qualities and and go off of that so swami says that <coughs> swami says that the very reason to experience peace at heart is to look at even the qualities of the smallest bhaktos obviously Everyone can see good qualities in the greatest bhaktos, but to see good qualities even in the smallest, the newest bhaktos, that will give peace at heart, which one will become more and more in progress day by day when one experiences this peace. When we will talk about the good qualities of others, we'll experience bliss. And when we talk about the negative qualities of others, we will experience misery. Obviously, this is something that doesn't need any explanation. This is something that we have been witnessing for years in our life. After coming into satsang, after realizing it's good to take good qualities, it's bad to take bad qualities, after realizing this knowledge, because in the world, those who, they don't even know regarding taking good or bad, the world is just a big mix of people. It doesn't really correlate or it doesn't have any kind of differences. But in satsang, that vivek drashti, that vision of discriminating between good and bad, right and wrong, is given via sansamagam. So in this fashion, one can definitely take that matter where it's very easy to talk about the bad qualities of someone over the good qualities of someone because you're probably thinking why I, I'm a satsangi you know I, I I do puja I follow dharam niyam I have bhakti all these kinds of qualities I have then why because ever since this soul has been around it has been engaged in maya and maya's slope maya's inclination is in that fashion due to that some of that maya has been layered over our atma and that's why it's easier to take bad qualities than good qualities of others but if you test yourself if you ex if you look inside of yourself you'd be able to tell that it's it's when i look at the good qualities when i'm in that sattva gun and i look at the good qualities i feel great I feel like uh, you know there's nothing else better in this world, but when I'm in that rajogun or tamogun state, then when I look at the bad qualities of others, automatically it may not seem improper at that moment, but after some time, one will feel pain at one's heart. This is something that one has experienced, and if not so, if you look inside, you'd definitely be able to tell. How can one take the good qualities of others? Now, this is obviously something that we need to now look. And why didn't Swami here ask, how can one take the bad qualities of others? Because no one needs to be taught that question. No one needs a way or no one needs an answer for that. That's automatically done. But how can one take the good qualities of others? That's definitely a formula that we need to learn 
in order to experience bliss in satsang, in order to get Rajipo of Maharaj, Guruji, Santo, and Bhakto. He understands oneself to be inferior to all. Obviously, uh, going back to that Vachnamrut, it's something that's common. If one believes oneself to be inferior, meaning lower, meek, poor than others, then definitely one will be able to see good qualities automatically. Dasna das thainere je reche satasangama bhakti teni bali manisha rachisha tena rangama. Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that whoever, um, whoever stays the dasna das, meaning the servants of the servants in satsang, his bhakti I will accept and I will stay with him. Now, for those thoughts, we can continue by Swami saying that I am greater than the souls of the world. If you think about it, those who are outside, those who have no relation with Maharaj, Guruji, Santo, and Bhakto, those souls are insignificant compared to ourselves. We can definitely have that kind of pride. But in satsang, when we compare our soul in satsang to all others, we are very minute and everyone else is very great. This kind of a core thought can really melt someone, meaning melt one's ego. And when one's ego melts, automatically one experiences bliss because the, the base nature of one's soul is bliss, happiness, but due to that layer of ego, it can't experience that bliss. But when that ego is shut off, when the ego is broken, by these kinds of thoughts, by churning these kinds of thoughts inside of her head, then automatically, the soul will go back to its innate nature, its base nature, which is happiness and bliss. And that's where Maharaj wants to take us. That's where Guruji wants to take us. <coughs> That's where Santo and Bhakto, who are striving, want to take us. But it's a matter of within our hands how much we want to churn those kinds of thoughts, how much we want to live in those kinds of thoughts, how much we want to apply in our life, and how much we don't want to apply in our life. I mean, satsang provides us with everything. Just like how a seed needs light, sunlight, uh, oxygen, and water. In the same way, satsang provides us with sansamagam, overall scriptures, murti, everything. But it's a matter of us applying those thoughts, applying that understanding in our life for that small seed to grow into a tree one day. Maharaj has kept me in the company of such, a, such great souls. Due to thinking in this fashion, one experiences constant bliss. I mean, it's something that's uh, comparable to if you think about it, a, a diamond. If you were given a diamond, and if you knew the credit of the diamond, then you would definitely know that this is nothing to be, uh, you know, this cannot be lost, this cannot be misplaced, this has to be taken care of, I need to put it in a safe. You would know this, no matter even how small the diamond is, you know its value is, is, is more than the money you have. That's how much of a, of a value you have. Similarly, all these souls, you can say, all those bhaktos, all those santos are like diamonds. If you think about it, Maharaj has kept me in their company. Maharaj has given me these diamonds, how much would you take care of it? How much would you value it? How much would you appreciate it? How much would you polish it? All these things would be done, right? If we think in that fashion that all of these bhaktos, all of these santos are like diamonds, then due to that, we'd be very, very happy. We'd be very, very elated. We would be very, very, uh, you can say, uh, we would experience bliss because we have those diamonds with us. We have that value with us. And Maharaj says in this Vachnamrut that one would experience constant bliss 
24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. Even a number is put there. Bhagwan states constant bliss. Bhagwan is showing us such a map that no other avatar, no other incarnation has showed us the way to experience constant bliss. Some have said that after you come into my abode, I'll give you my darshan for a certain amount of time. But only in Akshar Dham, Bhagwan's Murti's darshan is constant. And one feels that one is with Bhagwan one on one. But that bliss of Bhagwan can be experienced here on this earth by just this one virtue of thinking of the value of who we are in the company of. If we think in the value of those who are in the company of, and obviously if one has that value, then one would feel bliss. One would be like, I don't need anything else. I'm fulfilled. I'm very happy. Everything else, Everything is with me. There's nothing else I need to do. That fulfillment stays. And due to the soul's fulfillment, automatically bliss will constantly be coming out from our soul. By just putting a title on ourself that we are thus, meaning a servant, is easy. But in reality, have we become a thus? Do we know the true virtues of how a thus is or behaves? We have to become totally garib. Garib meaning poor or meek from the heart. That is the way to become a th true da das. You know, to say that we are das na das, to sing those kades, that's a beginning stage or a starter point. But after that, to really experience that, one has to sit alone and think in one's heart and become very, 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 poor, meek. Think about those people who are poor. Even in the slums of India, in cities like Mumbai, those who are poor, even if, if, even if they're not given food and they beg for food, they come and they beg, beg for food, yet they're thrown away. They may receive food, they may not receive food. Again, they go back. Gunatitanand Swami gives an example in Swami Nivatu. <coughs> and he says this, and off of this, Swami says that there was a big, a great famine, and due to that, there was a river bank, and those who did not have food would come up the hill. And those who were giving, given food, uh, or giving food like, um, like a kingdom, they were giving some food out. They would only give one, one fist of grains. But that was not enough because they would say, I have a son, I have a daughter, I have family, please give me more. And those people would push them away and they would roll off the river bank and fall into the river. Yet they would get back up again and, and, and strive again for a little more, a little more, give us more. That kind of meek nature, that kind of a poor nature, if we can develop that in satsang, then definitely that would be a characteristic of a das, a true das, a true servant. Then Swami gives a, <clears throat> a, a, an example of a parent and child relationship. When one is young, one enjoys playing with one's parents. One feels peace at heart due to the safety, comfort in one's parents. Think about it. One enjoys, uh, you know, playing on the on the lap of one's parent. Uh, you know, just completely behaving like a child. But there is no tension in our life. We don't have to pay taxes. We don't have to, uh, as a child, they don't have to uh, do any kind of uh, labor work or anything. They just behave as a child and live free in the world without any tension. But as we get older, we go into high school, we go into college, these examinations, we get, into, we get a career and tension builds in our life slowly but surely regarding paying off the mortgage or paying taxes or getting into this college or getting this kind of degree or getting these certain grades. 
due to that tension building up inside of our or even getting a, a, a better job and applying for a better job and passing those examinations to get a better job such kind of tension builds up in our life but when we are playing on the laps of our parents the peace the easy life is not present after we get older we forget that we forget our childhood and we become tangled up in all of these affairs of the world as I mentioned before but if one remembers the child is not powerful at all the child needs one's diaper to be changed the child needs to be fed in the mouth the child needs to be put to sleep it's not powerful it's not capable of doing even the most you can say simplest tasks but it believes its parents to be all powerful it believes that my parents will definitely take care of me my needs will provide me with food water it knows it that's why it goes to its parents when it gets in trouble when it cries when it senses some kind of danger it knows it knows that the only safety harbor it has is his parents due to that very reason it feels at ease this is the main you can say essence of this talk due to that very reason it feels at ease it knows it has a safety harbor to go to in satsang if we believe our maharaj puja guruji santo and bhakto to be our parents and we become like a child then we will experience constant bliss within our hearts because when we become like a child a child what does it know nothing a child how much intelligence does it have not so much a child how many swabhavs does it have it may have swabhavs but that's only when it, the child becomes older that those come out but when you're a child you're very innocent even in the sastras the scriptures it's said that a child's form is like the form of god because bhagwan is innocent and when a child is born until even the age of 5 6 is very innocent it doesn't have any kinds of uh, uh um any kinds of other vices inside of it similarly when we become a child in front of maharaj and guruji and santo in bhakto then automatically we know that we don't know anything we need them we need maharaj we need guruji we need santo we need bhakto due to that one will become a das one will become a servant and due to that one will experience bliss one will experience happiness i mean in the end all the soul wants is happiness may it be from maya or may it be from bhagwan but the problem is the soul doesn't know that bhagwan's happiness is permanent and maya's happiness is temporary and it also has misery behind it but the main you can say desire of the soul is happiness all it wants is happiness may it be buying fast cars or making a lot of money and spending it or may it be performing the meditation of maharaj's murti or performing sant samagam all the soul wants is bliss and bhagwan is kind enough to show us a map to attain that bliss a map to go back to that happiness a formula which if can be applied can solve many many problems in our life but it's a matter of if we want to apply that formula it's a matter of if we want to walk uh, walk according to the map to take us to that bliss the reason why we feel pain and misery in our hearts is because we forget that we are a child we start to think that we are equal to others we develop some type of ego now this is what happens when we get older older in these ages of 18 19 20 so on and so forth when we start to really blossom in our in our life when we start to really do something when we start to really elevate in our life in the fashion of 
making money, having a good career, um, having a better career than others, even in satsang, comparing ourselves that, oh, this, this Bhagat has been, had done this college and had got this degree, yet look at me, I only did this much and I got a better job than him, I have a better pay than him. These kinds of comparing uh, of uh, devotees to our similar level, what even if we are not that highly inclined in satsang, even if we don't have that or we haven't developed that kind of understanding, we comparing to those satsangis who may have jobs that are very, you know, mediocre, but their understanding in satsang is very high, very great, and Maharaj and Guruji definitely appreciate it. But we tend to compare it on the level of the world. Due to these kinds of things, we develop ego. And due to this factor, our happiness goes away from us. Then whenever we see that person, we're like, this guy is nothing. We make ourselves very great and we make the opposite person very, very small. But in reality, Bhagwan's vision, Bhagwan's perspective is the opposite. Bhagwan wants us to make us, ourselves, very minute and wants us to look at everyone else as very great. If we can grasp Bhagwan's perspective, then we would be able to attain happiness instantly. It's an instant formula doesn't take too much time we tend to feel guilty when someone says something to us that we do not want to hear obviously this is something that everyone experiences maybe in high school college or at your jobs or whatever you do it's something that's just there it's just something that is is just permanently integrated inside of our DNA that we tend to feel guilty when someone says something to us that we do not want to hear. Meaning we take it to ourselves. We hang on to those words. If someone tells us, no one's going to tell us something like, you know, you're, you're stupid or anything like that. But definitely, suppose that you do a task, you do a seva, and everyone in the mandir says you did a great seva but there is just this one bhagat that comes up to you and says you know you could have done better than this this is not the seva that this is not the way to do this you know you should have gave it to me to do we heard 99 people say good job but when that one person comes and says eh, you didn't cut it you didn't do that well then our whole, you can say, mood, our whole character breaks in half. What is the reason for that? 99 people, we totally forgot those 99 approved. And we completely gave our attention to just that one. And due to that, we break our 99. And there we go. Our mood is broken for two days. Oh, we don't, we can't, you know, we can't think straight. Everything that we do, we feel like it's just a waste. Every time when we're experiencing these kinds of feelings, when we come into satsang, we feel like we're worthless. This is, this is not the way that Bhagwan wants us to think. We believe that this person does not understand us. That one person does not understand us, but those 99 people, they definitely understood us. They definitely knew where we are coming from. They definitely knew that we are doing the right thing. But this one person that Bhagwan has sent, at that time we can't have that. Under, we don't have that understanding. But that one person that Bhagwan has sent to break our ego of the 99 that we don't even know about, that Bhagwan has sent as his private agent, we can say, we completely forget about everything and we say, ah, it's not, I don't want to do this anymore, you know? Why? When 99 people were saying you wanted to do it, when that one person said 
and it broke your ego. It hurt you. It made you feel guilty because you didn't want to hear that kind of a comment from anyone. You wanted 100% result, but you only got 99. That's why. Others should learn to understand me. These are the thoughts that one develops. Others should learn to understand me, my situation, who I am. Those who are watching, such kind of thoughts, think inside if you develop these kinds of thoughts. If you have such kind of thoughts revolving around this, that, you know, they should understand me, my situation, you know, who I am, what I have done, what I'm trying to do for others. The very reason one develops these kinds of thoughts is because one feels that I am greater than others, which Bhagwan does not want us to do. So this is kind of like a disease right now. A temporary virus has, has, has entered into our body, entered into our mind, that you know we are something, we are greater. Why can't, why can't you understand me? But honestly, the thing is, we have to understand others. No one has to understand us. Forget about the us and understand others. Help others out. Become selfless. Bhagwan Swaminarayan wants us to do this. And that's what Swami has stated in this Katha so far. Moving on. Muktan Swami was the pinnacle of understanding. Many people would tell Swami off. Try to prove he is wrong, and in result, with little ease, he would become a das and agree with any kinds of arguments. Imagine the level of sunyabhav he has developed in his heart. Now, Muktan Swami was such a great saint. He was 24 years older than Sriji Maharaj himself. He had innumerous virtues of saintliness. His greatness was fathomed throughout satsang and is right now we remember him every day when we sing the arti out of 262 vachanamruts 262 most questions are asked by muktanand swami muktanand swami's contribution to satsang is not comparable to any other sant even then even then swami was insulted. Even then, Swami was not given the proper credit. Even then, Swami was told off by others. But Swami did not take any of those roads. Swami did not take any of those paths. Swami took the path of a das. Swami took the path of a servant. And that servitude, that that feeling of das is due to sunyabhav. Sunyabhav is something where we become zero. Sunya is zero. Bhav is feeling or emotion. For us to feel that we are nothing, we are zero, we don't have any kind of value, that's called sunyabhav. No matter how much you do, yet nothing. It's all Maharaj, it's all Guruji, they're doing it. This satsang is so that those who possess good qualities within oneself, others will praise them. That this isn't just this is just an automatic notion in satsang. You know, those who have good qualities, they'll look and they'll be like, This is a great Hari Bhagat. He has great Mahima, he has great Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya. He is a very, very great devotee. Automatically, satsang has this kind of, uh, you can say, uh, switch that whenever a person enters into satsang, whenever a person starts to develop good qualities, praise will come and come towards him. It's just something that's integrated inside of satsang. When a small devotee or a soul now what i mean by small is new in satsang insults one then one will think 
I am something. Who is this person? Where did he come from? Who do you think he is? He is new in satsang. He doesn't know too much. Yet, he insulted me. We feel insulted. And due to that, we become disturbed. And when we become disturbed, then Bhagwan runs away from us. Bhagwan doesn't run away from our hearts. He plays hide and seek. But when we cannot see Bhagwan, then there is no happiness. When we cannot experience Bhagwan, his kartapanu everywhere, all doership, his, his omniscience everywhere, then we automatically, bliss goes away from our heart. We feel disturbed. But when we can experience him, then if we think about it, we feel happy very much. No matter how much one has power of oneself, if one starts to ask oneself, meaning sometimes in satsang we develop power. Power for, you know, in satsang, not outside. Power that, you know, okay, I'm able to do some satsang. You know, oh, I'm able to teach these people. Oh, you know, I have about 50 vachanamurts by heart no one i know of in satsang has this done that means you know yeah i am something oh swami nivato i have about 15 20 by heart kadis they're nothing i have 30 kadis by heart look at these bhaktos they have them but not as much as myself you know this kind of a power develops oh i am doing this much seva and Compared to this person, my seva is much greater. I come to Mandir every day to do darshan of Bhagwan. And even my neighbor, who is a satsangi, does not come besides Saturdays. Unbelievable. I mean, yeah, it, it is something. I mean, it is, out of all the bhaktos we have that come every Saturday, I am the only one who comes every day. I mean, if you think about it, that is something. That is a feat. But what what thoughts does Swami give us to kind of counter these thoughts? If one starts to ask oneself, am I Brahm Rup? No, that's a no. Do I possess Atma Nishta? Uh, I, I become angry in such a short period of time. I don't think Atma Nishta really fits me. Do I see Bhagwan constantly? Uh, that's also a no. Then who am I? If I don't even have these characteristics and I have power for all the other things, then who am I? Then how can I think of myself as greater than others? Why can't I see the good qualities of others? When one questions oneself, kind of like an interrogation, just like how a detective or a policeman interrogates a criminal, asks him, why did you do this? Where'd you come from? Is this where you were at this specific time? Are you sure you weren't there? That heat, that pressure, that hot seat, that feeling, that person will break in a short period of time and give those give the answers to the detective right there and then when we put our own self in the hot seat interrogate our own self ask our own self these kinds of questions that am I Brahmarup? do I have Atmanishta can I see Bhagwan constantly when we put ourselves in that hot, hot seat automatically no matter how much power we have whatever we do in satsang how much ever seva we do, it becomes completely nil. Because compared to these things, those things are nothing. Compared to these three elements, just these three questions, anything and everything that we do in satsang is nothing. That's how great of an emphasis these three questions are. But by asking oneself, by interrogating, by putting oneself in the hot, hot seat, one can again come back to the ground level and become dasna das. This is a kind of like a, a, a tactic that one can use on oneself that if we develop some kind of power,
and this is a way to kind of deflate that balloon. What are the characteristics of a person who does not ever develop bad qualities in others? Meaning develop, see, witness, display, show, you know, bad qualities in others. What are the characteristics of a person who does not ever develop bad qualities in other, others? Number one, possesses Atmanishta, believes oneself to be Akshar and believes others to be greater, greater than oneself. Whoever can develop, whoever can become dasna das, has the eligibility to become aksha rup. Also becomes beyond praise and install, insult. Again, I want to repeat that one sentence. Whoever can become dasna das, has the eligibility to become aksha rup. Now, Bhagwan, aksha is a is a very uh, complicated and complex word that we just want to skim the surface of. But just to help you understand in this context, Akshar is the home of Bhagwan. Just like how our soul, our home, is this body. In the same way, Bhagwan's home is our soul. Now, when we... The div divine abode of Bhagwan is called Akshar Dham. Akshar is pretty much just to point out divine light. Inside of that divine light, Bhagwan lives there constantly, forever, and he is there giving darshan. When we join ourself, meaning our soul, with Bhagwan, then we are called Akshar Rup. Okay? So, simply, how can one join oneself with Bhagwan? By first becoming Dasna Das. When we become Dasna Das, servant of the servant, humble, then we have the eligibility to become Akshar Rup or to join with God. It's like, uh, you know, if you get this score on the SATs, then you're eligible to get into Harvard University. Same way, if you become Das, then you would be able to join with Bhagwan and become Akshar Rup. Just a short definition. Those who are truly great do not ever believe oneself to be great. Due to this very factor, countless souls are able to take refuge under such a great saint. This is talking about a Satpurush, meaning Puja Guruji, we can take him in this perfect example that you can see him, you know, managing thousands of mandirs as the, the chief executive of Vratal Mandir. And you can also see him playing musical chairs with six year olds. Does that mean that he likes musical chairs? Does that mean he likes playing games? No. Does that mean that he likes to run 1,000 mandirs? No. That's not the example. The example is he, is he can go as high as he wants and he can go as low as he wants without any thought of, I am great. Why, can, why should I play with these kids? Or why should I sit on the ground? I need some kind of a high seat because I'm great. He doesn't need that. He doesn't have it. It's not in him. Because he doesn't feel that he's great. He is always living in that sunya bhao stage. And due to that, countless souls, countless souls become attracted to him. Countless souls join in him. And due to joining in him, he is able to take them to Bhagwan. But if he didn't behave in the Sunya Bhav level, then this would never happen. No one would join in him. No one would be interested. No one would feel that this is a great saint. But due to this level of understanding he possesses, countless souls join, him, join, in, join inside of him. And due to that, he is able to take them to Akshardham. The great show us that we need him, but in reality, they do not need anyone. 
It shows us that, you know, our Guruji, our Satpurush tells us, oh, I'm unable to understand this language. Can you please help and translate? Or can you please type this up? Or can you please write this for me? Uh, you know, I need this very much. Such kind of please, such kind of, you can say, like, a person who doesn't know anything, pleading, could you do this for me? Could you do that for me? But in reality, they have such kind of immense, immense energy and power of Bhagwan that they can do anything by anyone at any time they want. But such kind of pleas are shown by the Satpurush. Such kind of garib banu. Such kind of, you can say, meekness is shown and displayed by the Satpurush. Because that's his inclination. That's what he likes to live in. That's what he lives for. Is to become the ass of others. He doesn't like running people, managing people. He doesn't like telling others what to do he likes to be told what to do but he lives in that fashion for the sake of our for others good so if such great santo live like this then we should learn to forget if we get insulted or if someone hurts our ego or does not give us the proper credit if they live like this then there's no way that we can live beyond them. There's no way that we can we can uh, have a greater status than Satpurush. So that's something to think about. Characteristic number two, how not to develop bad qualities or look at bad qualities in others. Possesses Maima. Swami then took a, a, an example from Vach number Gadada, first chapter 24th. Moreover, when a fault is noticed in a devotee, one should think his swabhav is such that it is not suitable in the satsang fellowship. Nevertheless, he has attained satsang. Regardless of what he is like, he is still remained in satsang fellowship. Surely then, his sanskars from the past lives or from this very life must be extremely favor favorable for him to have attained this satsang. With this understanding, one should highly appreciate even such a person's virtues. In this satsang, we get everyone. We, all, ki all kinds of swabhaos. Just like how in the forest or in the jungle, a pond is in the middle, or even in the desert, an oasis is there. All kinds of animals come. The lion, which has a ferocious nature, comes. And the elephant, which has a calm nature, comes. And a giraffe, and a snake, which has an angry nature, comes. And a rabbit, which has a very, very meek nature, comes. All kinds of animal come to one pond to drink water. Similarly, in satsang, all kinds of natures come but we should learn to appreciate them because compared to the people of the outside world those who are in satsang but may have such vicious natures they at least have the darshan of maharaj puja guruji santo and bhakto they have the samagam of his satpurush his santo and bhakto then if we compare it to the world, people of the outside, then we, sh we can automatically appreciate them that, yeah, sure, they may have some kind of nature, but at least they're in the company of such kind of great. Then, truly, I appreciate that person. One would feel in one's heart like this. To become happy or miserable is in one's own hands, Swami says. God has given each soul the capacity to become sunya, meaning meek, poor, zero. The real strength of the soul is sunya bhav, but one always behaves the opposite by finding places where one's ego and pride become fulfilled. 
the nature, the 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 innate base nature of the soul is sunyabao, bliss, dasna das. All these all these characteristics consist of the soul. But that layer of Maya, that layer of ego, pride is so and this is why we are doing satsang to break that layer via these kinds of thoughts via churning these kinds of thoughts inside of our mind thinking and thinking as we go on and on in our satsang journey churning and churning when we start to live around these kinds of thoughts then that layer of, of ego pride breaks and we're able to experience the real true form of our soul and inside of that soul the true essence is Bhagwan Swami Narayan his, his divine idol his murti don't take it the wrong way or don't don't go in that fashion where one has to experience one's soul that's not the message here the message is to experience Bhagwan, the ultimate message the ultimate goal but to get there there is stepping stones that one has to take and these are the stepping stones moving on those who have maima think of the basis of relation. This Hari Bhagat is Maharaj's, Pujaguruji's, Santos and Bhaktos. Even if a person is full of faults, always look at the relation. Just how I said, the outside world, worldly people don't have any relation with Maharaj, Guruji and Santo. Then they are nothing to us. But those who do have relation... Even if they have some kind of vice, some kind of fault, we should learn to forget. And we should learn to look at their relation. When we look at the relation, automatically his about his faults would not come. And lastly, the third characteristic is possesses affection for Santo and Bhakto. Obviously, Maharaj, Santo and Bhakto. Out of the 262 Vachnamruts, 80 of them state, that one should learn to develop and cultivate others' good qualities. One who has affection for others would never be able to take or see bad qualities. This is a given in our family. May it be if you're married, then, or may it be if you, uh, you and your father have a relationship. No matter how many arguments we get into, no matter what we say to each other, It'll last maybe one, two days, let's say even a week. But due to that affection, we always tend to get back together. And when we get back together, it seems like nothing has even happened. Such kind of affection is there for one's wife, for one's husband, for one's parents, brother, sister, relations in general. In satsang, why can't we do this? In satsang, why can't we possess such kind of affection that, yeah, sure, if someone said something to us or someone has this kind of a nature, why can't we forget and get back together right away? What takes us so long to bridge that gap of relation that has become distant? What takes so long? The answer is ego or pride, obviously. But if we have affection, then true affection, then no abhaw or no bad qualities can be seen. And if no bad qualities can be seen, then there would be no dis distant, there would be no gap. It would be just oneness. Swami gave an example of how one day Sriji Maharaj was uh, in Dada Kachar's Darbar. And it was the afternoon time and it was time for Santos to uh, take lunch. So they sat all in one line and Santos eat in wooden bowls. So Maharaj himself decided that he wanted to serve Santos. So Maharaj himself served all the Santos 
all the different kinds of various foods, and then he washed his hands and he sat back down on his seat. After some time, two santos who were doing seva, they were late. They came and they're like with their wooden bowls and they said, Maharaj, please give us something from your hands. Maharaj said, everything I have given from my hands is in the wooden bowls of these santos. Go ahead and take a little bit from there. And it would be equivalent to me giving you prasad. So the santos started. Now there's this one Swami who only took ladu. A little bit, a little bit from each sant. And his whole wooden bowl was filled with ladu. The other sant took a little bit of rotli, a little bit of sak, a little bit of ladu, dar, bat, everything, just a little bit. And his putter was filled with different various kinds of foods. After those santos ended, the, the line ended, they sat and they started to take prasad. While they were taking prasad, Maharaj saw this and extracted a principle from this very factor. Maharaj said that that one sadhu, he only took one item, which was ladu, so he only looked at one quality, or he only, uh, in that fashion, if one sees only one quality in someone that, oh, this, ha this person has meima, this person has meima, this person has meima, this person has meima, then that one quality will come inside of us. But if we learn to look at various qualities in different, different bhaktos, high, low, meaning this bhagat seva is extraordinary, and this bhagat's meima is something that I have not seen, and this bhagat's dharma is very strong in satsang, this bhagat's bhakti is something unparalleled to what I have seen in a very long time. These kinds of different qualities, if we take them, then our bowl would be filled with different various qualities, meaning our heart, our soul would be filled with different various qualities. So one should learn to take the good qualities of others, various different kinds, and that would automatically be, automatically would come inside of us. And then Swami gave a modern example. Um, Socrates gave this example in his time where he took a glass of water and it was only half filled the other half was empty and he asked everyone is the glass half full or half empty meaning if you look at it it's both right but those who had a positive thinking pattern inside of their head they would always witness and see and think that the glass is half full and those who had a negative thinking pattern would always see that it's half empty. Socrates gave the example and then he gave the answer that I look at it as half full because he had that positive thinking pattern. Similarly, we should have that pattern as well. Moving on, one should develop the vision of a sculpture, a sculptor, a person who sculpts no matter how rough or rigid the stone is, he looks from the he looks for the good and sculpts a beautiful statue from it. In the same way, no matter how a person may be, think about the satpurush he has received and how great he is, and will one day the satpurush will destroy his sobaos. So that relation, going back to that relation, if we think in that way, then. It would be something that would definitely help us experience peace at heart. Antardrashti is looking at one's own self uh, and not to look around. And finally, Swami gives an example at last about a swan. A swan looks for pearls. In the other way, a crow looks only for stale meat. What do we want to become? It's in our hands. Swami leaves us with a last question. Seeing this, this is uh, U.S. Sabha course three. A PDF, a PDF file is also shared with this uh, course video link, both in Gujarati and English. So those who are not getting the course or want to be a part of this course, you can uh, email us at luedamnj at gmail.com and would be more than happy to send you.